People join the world of Genshin Impact every day. And if you're watching this, you're probably one of them. Or you're a subscriber that's been watching me for a while and just watches all of my videos. Either way, thanks for being here. Today I'm going to be going over 5 key tips that you should know if you're a newer player to Genshin Impact. Which according to my YouTube community tab poll, that's a lot of people. So let's get into it. This was the first tip I got from a friend when I first started playing. It's important to only stick to a couple of characters when you first start, rather than building up every single character you get. This is mainly so that you have enough materials and mora down the road, so that when you know what you're doing and when you know how to use materials and mora efficiently, you're not wasting time trying to get them. To contextualise, let me tell you how I got started. In my first two weeks of playing Genshin Impact, I got a ton of characters. I guess I got quite lucky in the beginning. I documented my progress on TikTok, which I'll put in the background right now. Anyway, the first non-starter character I got was Beidou, who immediately stuck out for me. So I invested a lot of resources into Beidou. I got Ning Wang the week after, who I had my eye on because I had heard she was a pretty good character. So once I got her, I started investing a lot into her as well. I was aware that I had a huge backlog of characters that I could build up, but my mindset was that as long as I invest my resources into a few damage dealing characters right now, everybody else can get leveled up later on down the line when I'm a late game player, which is true. In the early ARs, you just need to focus on building up a couple of damage dealing characters. Once you know what you're doing, and once you're above AR45 or even AR50, you can start to invest into more characters. But at lower ARs, you're better off investing your time into the story aspect of Genshin and saving the majority of your resources. When Inazuma first came out, a whole bunch of lower AR players were trying to ice bridge to Inazuma. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it doesn't work. I mean, you can try and do it with your friends as a joke, but if you're genuinely desperate about getting to Inazuma, that's not the way to do it. You can get to Inazuma if you focus on getting the main story quests done. Once you've completed the leeway arc and you're above AR30, you should be able to get the quests you need to start your venture into Inazuma. This is probably because the enemy difficulty in Inazuma is harder than that of Mondstadt and Liyue. So if you're below AR30, you probably don't have the game sense or the power to handle it. This also brings up another point, which is if you are a player who has not unlocked Inazuma yet and you're planning on wishing for a character from Inazuma, don't. I mean, you can. You just won't be able to use them because the resources that you need to level up Inazuma characters are in Inazuma. You won't be able to get them past level 20 for a long time. You're better off unlocking Inazuma and even Enkonomiya first before wishing for certain characters, even if that means waiting for their rerun. As you grow as a Genshin Impact player, you will come to realise the importance of Prima Gems. Once you have your eye on a certain 5 star character, it's time you learn about the pity system. Allow me to explain. For every 10 wishes you do, you are guaranteed a 4 star. Once you've wished 90 times, you are 100% guaranteed to get a 5 star character. If you get a 5 star character that is not the limited 5 star that's advertised on that banner, your pity is reset. And the next time you hit 90 wishes, you are guaranteed to get that limited 5 star character. Once you get a limited 5 star character, your pity resets to 0 again, and the next time you hit 90, the cycle starts again. This is called the 50-50, where you have a 50-50 chance of getting the limited 5 star or one of the other standard 5 stars. It works similarly to the limited character banner, except there is no concept of a 50-50. Whatever 5 star you get is totally random. It could be a character or a weapon. I guess that's as 50-50 as it's going to get over there. The weapon banner has a different pity system to it altogether. You will have the option to choose which 5 star weapon you want from the weapon banner. However, to get that weapon guaranteed, you will have to pull a 5 star weapon 3 times in total, meaning that you will have to pull on the weapon banner a maximum 
of 270 times before you are guaranteed to get what you want. It's important to note that these three banners do not share pity. So if your pity on the character banner is let's say 45 and you've not wished on the weapon banner at all, your weapon banner pity is zero. The limited character banner and the weapon banner share the same types of fates that you need to wish on them, while the standard banner has its own type of fates. Note how it is possible to get a 5 star before getting to 90 pity, so don't be too down about that. Once you've learnt how the pity system works, you'll learn that it's better to spend your primos on the limited banner rather than the standard banner. This is because there is no 50-50 concept on the standard banner, so you risk wasting your primos for something that you probably won't use. If you just wish on the standard banner, there's a whole range of characters, weapons and playstyles that you're missing out on that you'll never get the chance to try out if you wish on the standard banner. The standard banner is always there, while limited banners have a time limit, so you're better off using your primos on limited banners. It is possible to wish on the standard banner without using your primos to do so. For instance, if you level up your characters to certain milestones, you'll receive a standard banner fate. If you get to certain milestones on the battle paths, you'll also get a wish, and it's totally free. So now you're not using your primos on the standard banner. That means you have the means to learn how to save your primos for a character that you really, really want when they appear on the limited banner. To learn more about saving, I have a whole trilogy on that if you want to check that out. You'll notice as you rank up, you'll get these little moon things. In fact, you'll build a collection of them. Please, for the love of the Archons, do not even think about using them until you're a late game player. Resources for late game players are scarce to say the least, and you will thank yourself later if you do not use them right now. Just don't use them until you're like AR50 or something, please, I'm, I'm talking for experience here. Anyway, those are my tips for newer Genshin players. If you have any tips for any new Genshin players, leave them in the comments down below. If you're a new player, I hope this helped. I'll catch you next time. Hey there. If you like Genshin Impact, Animal Crossing or games in general, join our chill Discord server. Thanks and have a nice day.